Hey everybody, welcome to the third episode of Cage Insider Off the Chain, Cage Insider's exclusive interview series where we talk to people involved with the series in various capacities. My name is PJ, I also go by Dandelion on the forums, and I'm your host. This week I am without my engineer Rob, my usual silent partner, he's off saving the world from bad audio. Uh, but special shout out to Rob from Geekbeat Radio for usually joining us. Thankfully, though, I am not alone, because today we are joined by a very special guest. Her work in video game journalism has been featured on G4, Polygon, Gotaku, GameSpot, to name a few. And recently, she's co-created the multi-platform podcast, What's Good Games, with an all-female team of powerhouse co-hosts, Andrea Renee, Brittany Brombacher, and Christine Steimer. Our guest has just released the newest book in Boss Fight Games' current season, and the topic, of course, is Kingdom Hearts. Please give it up for Alexa Ray Korea. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you for having me. That's quite an intro. I just want to make everyone know that, like, we really appreciate the time that our our guests take to do these interviews, and that it's not wasted. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad I was able to catch you uh, before you know we all shuffle off to D23. So let's talk a little bit about um, just how you got started in video games. Like, what was like the first video game you remember playing, and how did you grow to like love these things? I, oh my gosh, I don't remember my first game specifically, but I remember it was in, it was in uh, NES uh, that I played at my cousin's house and he had all the games and we were very small and I was like, oh, I, I want one of these. And that sort of spiraled into me wanting to play video games and not wanting to play outside. My mom would set up play dates between me and like all the other like little girls and they would like be talking about gymnastics and like dance. And I'm like, well, I play a video game called Final Fantasy. And they're like, what? So here I am. I'm now, you know, a grown, <laughs> grown ass adult, like making a career out of this. Um, and I started in media in 2012. I was part of the launch team uh, at Polygon. So I helped get that uh, lovely project out the door and then GameSpot poached me in 2014 and I moved out to California. And then I left last year to focus more on consulting. So I do a lot of, um, a lot of consulting and actually some like game writing, but I've been working on this book specifically for about two years. So it's just been, oh, that's, wow. it's, it's been really great to see something like in print that's not online. Wow. You know, I think it's funny. I try, I, I think it's really, really interesting seeing how like the, uh, the what's play, like the let's play and like the, the um, video game community specifically kind of form around watching other people live stream video games. And I think a lot of people are kind of quick to judge them like, well, what do you get out of watching a video game? But I think that people who are like around our age, like grew up with like the older, better off cousin who could afford like different game yep. consoles. And every time we would go over, we would watch over their shoulder. Yep. <laughs> um, so I totally relate to that. And I think it's so interesting to see just how, how far things have come. I don't understand when people complain about like little things in video games, when you think about the fact that there's such a new art form, a new media, like it's just, it blows my mind to see how far they've come in the past 20 years, the past five years even. Oh like, yeah. It's crazy to me. Um, going on what you said about like watching people play. I, you know, I have a roommate and right. I have friends and like, I like to sit and watch them play Breath of the Wild and see how they do things differently. Or maybe, you know, I'm not ready to try out arms and I watch them for a while to see like what they do it. Like I like watching people play video games. It's, it's, I, I, I'm still getting something out of it. I'm still participating in the video game. I just don't have the controller in my hand. Yeah. Cause everyone's going to play a game differently. Even if you've played it a thousand times. Yeah. Like um, a friend of mine who is also like a kingdom hearts fanatic was recently watching someone else's let's play of the first game and Sora got to the part in Hollow Bastion where you can freeze the bubbles in oh, Rising yes. Falls and he was like what the hell is this I never knew that you could freeze those bubbles yep. I was like that's been there since the beginning so I always love it how I mean you just there's some, some things that you would never think about doing with any kind of video game and then someone comes along and it's just like well let me try this and it works oh um, yeah I think that's the beauty of it really yeah, I agree. Um, so uh, a little birdie told me that you were part of a cosplay group. Oh, shit. Did you find those photos? <laughs> At one point. But I wanted to ask you about it. Um, I believe it was Final Fantasy IX. It was Final Fantasy IX. Um, I met all, all of my 
closest friends I met either through mutual love of games or through working in the industry. Uh, my mm -hmm. roommate works for Nintendo, so I can t I can say the uncle who works for Nintendo. I have the roommate who works for Nintendo. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, we all met. Uh, we met through cosplay at like Oticon uh, when we were, most of us were in college or just getting into college. So we were pretty young and a group of, you know, young people traveling down to using their vacation days to travel to Baltimore to sweat in this heat in these silly Aww. costumes. And I think some of us met at New York Comic Con and then I brought that group down to Baltimore to meet another friend. And we met a bunch of people that lived in that neck of the, neck of the woods. And we became this uber group of friends that had uh, the one big thing in common and that is a mutual love of you know final fantasy jrpgs and stuff like that and one mm -hmm. girl who is one of my best friends in the world i just went to japan with her in april for two weeks she was cosplaying when i first met her she was cosplaying garnet or dagger and i remember um speaking with her and her saying oh i wish i had a, i wish i had a group so i could pose and do cool photos with and i looked at her and i'm like well let's do this Let's make a freaking <laughs> cosplay group. So we had everyone. We had a mascot. We built a mascot suit for our Quinna. Um, I, was oh, wow. I was I was Beatrix. Um, another girlfriend of mine was a Steimer, and we made all of our costumes proportionate to that cartoony sense that that cartoony look that Final Fantasy IX has. So we had right. big, big feet, giant heads, giant props. Like everything was <laughs> was that had that same big, big, big um, feeling to it. We didn't really scale it to make it look real. We just kept the cartooniness. Um, I'll never forget our, our Steimer bought fake eyelashes and put them on the bottom of her eyes. Because if you look at his character model, he has those like lashes right on the bottom. And she looked like mm -hmm. he, she looked like she walked right out of the, right out of the, um, the game. So that's the last time I did a giant group like that. I've cosplayed since then. I also haven't taken very many photos of my in progress stuff, but I don't, mm. I really don't want to share them until they're done, but yeah. <laughs> Well, I, you know what? No pressure. I think that's amazing. I think that um, cosplay to me is something that's so fascinating. It's like a world that I can only view through a telescope. Like it's not something that I've immersed myself in, but I think it's really cool. Um, I don't think it's not a hang up with the, the concept. I just can't think of anybody that I resemble. I know that doesn't matter, but for yeah, me, it does I not can't matter. Anybody that, yeah. But I can't think of anybody that I would feel comfortable enough playing that I resemble close enough, really, mm -hmm. except maybe the protagonist Jack from the first Bioshock, because we have the same choice of sweaters. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I wore I wore a red shirt with a star on it, and people thought I was cosplaying a Steven Universe, and I was like, I just look like this. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about what's good games. Well, I've known I've known Andrew and Renee for a very long time. We live very close to each other. We drink together quite frequently. Um, and she and I have always been talking about doing something together. We've, we, we were both in media. She does hosting and she does a lot of production work. She's a one woman producer and absolute powerhouse. And we always talked about working together and never really had an opportunity. And uh, last year we just started talking with Brittany and Steimer. We've all known each other for a long time and just sort of spun this up and it just kind of happened. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I think we have a really good dynamic and also the, those girls are just so funny and so smart. So you put the four of us, you put the four of us in a room on any given day and it's going to be entertaining. So we were like, why not just record this? They've got a Patreon that you can donate to. I think that you guys are making over 5,000 a month right now. Yeah, we're at, we're at, we're at 5,000. We would like to buy some, uh, we kind of, uh, we cobble together our recording and streaming setup. It's very brilliant, but it's very complex. And uh, as people who have been following the podcast know, we still have some difficulties with recording. Um, uh, calling calling in and video and audio recording two people every week is uh, can get a little hairy with all of the tracks and stuff. Tell me about it. So we would like to buy some nicer equipment. So please donate <laughs> to our patreon.com slash Games. <laughs> okay, so let's get into boss fight books in kingdom hearts 2. so um for everyone at home that doesn't know boss fight books was founded in los angeles in june 2013 by gabe dunham gabe is awesome i've never met him but i follow his twitter and i love oh, him so good. um so good. <laughs> boss fight books publishes uh books about classic video games each book takes a critical historical and personal look at a single game and alexa's book is the newest so how did you did how well did you know <laughs> Um, people at Boss Fight Books beforehand, did they ask you to pitch? Did you send in the pitch, like, uninvited? What happened so this, there? So this book was, like, a weird, 
we we kind of arrived at it by accident and then it became it be, i it was it became the best thing ever so boss fight uh last year uh typically gabe has been reaching out and speaking with writers that he wanted to work with or you know high profile people that wanted to write something before season three and for season three i had read all the boss fight books but in season three gabe um put it took open submissions so it was anyone anyone could pitch it was totally open submissions and i thought about it for a while and i was like all right i'll pitch but what game like i want to do a critical analysis in college i wrote reports i did you know critical critical theory and stuff like that and i wanted to apply the same learning to a video game so what's a game that everyone loves and what is a jrpg that everyone loves because that's my bread and butter is jrpgs and right. uh Gabe had a very specific, he very, very specifically uh, makes sure that boss fight books, uh, the games are not modern. They have to have come out more than 10 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. So to make them classic. So nobody could write anything about, you know, Fallout 4. Like that's not, that's, that's too recent for, uh, the, for the kind of literature that he's looking for. So I pitched Final Fantasy VI and Gabe got in touch with me and he was like, okay, let's talk about this. And we sort of worked through the pitch and he was like, well, everybody writes about Final Fantasy VI. What is something that like, is there anything else that you're incredibly passionate about? And I was like, well, I love Kingdom Hearts, but you don't want to hear about that garbage. And he said, no, 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 no. Like, let's like, let's talk about Kingdom Hearts. And he asked me and he said, so what is, what is the one question that people always ask you or always ask about Kingdom Hearts? that you would want to answer. And the question that I get all the time, because I'm a grown woman who freaking loves Kingdom Hearts is, oh, isn't Kingdom Hearts a kid's game? Isn't it a baby game? And I get wah, irate wah. and I get irate and I say, no, it's not. And here's why. And I went on this diatribe about all of the tropes and themes and like the darkness and like how hard, how difficult that game gets. Like the difficulty spike for bosses in Kingdom Hearts 2 is just crazy. Like. I yeah. went I went off on it and Gabe said to me, you know, I think I think you have your I think you have your book. Like you have to write about Kingdom Hearts. One big problem, it is pretty recent. It is a pretty recent series. And I mm -hmm. knew that I wanted to frame the book around Kingdom Hearts 2 because Kingdom Hearts 2 is where um, the story really comes into its own and a lot of those tropes and uh, themes really come to fruition and have their punchlines. So I knew I wanted to frame it around Kingdom Hearts 2. And Gabe and I had this conversation in 2015 and Kingdom Hearts 2 came out in 2005. So it just made the cutoff <laughs> for, for a, a boss fight book. And then I spent the next two years, uh, you know, researching, honing, thinking, working on it. And here we are. <laughs> I think that's excellent. I, I, I get very, very upset whenever people try to peg down Kingdom Hearts as just one thing for just one demographic. Because, I mean, it, it can be a kid's game in the way that Disney makes kid movies or yeah. the way Final Fantasy makes teenage games. But the fact of the matter is, the, the, the harder you look, the deeper you can go. And the more you can appreciate it, the older you get. Um, right. So I think that I think it's a very shallow thing for gamers to look at something and dismiss it, whether it be Disney, whether it be whatever, without taking the plunge. Mm -hmm. So I'm very I'm very thankful for this book in a lot of different ways. I don't think there's enough critical analysis on the Kingdom Hearts series. Oh, correct. I don't think anything. It, it does read a lot like um, kind of like an outline for a senior thesis. It it, it jumps in there. It's very academic. Um, and I, I think that if more people talked about the themes the way you do in this book, um, even if people disagreed, they can come to understand each other's points a lot better. Yes. Um, so yeah. yeah, thank you. That's how that's 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 how I feel about the book mostly. I really like it. I enjoy the way that it was written. I think that this is a great start on how everybody should be talking about these games. No, I agree. I'm really hoping that people read it and they think, well, I have a feeling about this in Kingdom Hearts because you don't see a lot of critical writing on Kingdom Hearts. It's like no. either where's Kingdom Hearts three and oh my god, look at this weird thing in Kingdom Hearts. Right, but I it's there for the taking. Because right. there's so many titles, yeah. Yeah, I think there's just so many, you know, interesting themes and interesting things about the game that you can't see when you're just looking at the surface level. So I really hope that this inspires other people to pick it up and think and write. Something that had me kind of fist pump in the air, the, the topic of male intimacy and yes. friendship. Yes, oh my gosh, um, yes. 
<laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Let's talk about that. Um, for, for people who haven't bought the book yet, and they're still on the fence or they want to know. Um, this chapter is actually up on Kotaku. I'll have a link to it. Take a, take a read of it. It's it's what made me go, oh, wow, okay. So this is what this book is going to be. I, I think that in media um, and just in society in general, particularly out here, men aren't taught with how to deal with their emotional baggage. And so they don't know what they need in terms of friendship and intimacy which is why when you see two women become friends and get close and like hug each other and like roll over each other and like share each other's food and do whatever, it's not considered anything other than, than them being close friends. But just seeing it, just seeing it from a platonic viewpoint, men don't have that because it's only just recently kind of been called to attention in media that, Hey, men haven't been taught how to be responsible with their, with their emotional well being and also the emotional needs of others. So I think you hit the nail on the head, having Sora be the kind of pro protagonist that searches for Riku, but then when he finds him, drops to his knees and cries is so important. That moment, that that is that is the moment in those games that sticks with me the most, is that is him just falling to his knees and crying and holding Riku and being like, Riku's here, Riku's here. Um, it was the most, I think, the most emotionally powerful moment of any of those games so far. I was having this conversation with someone a few days ago about how in literature and in, vid in video games and most modern media, uh, uh, men, male emotional needs or just needs in general aren't really met. It's always about the women right. and it's always about, you know, what, what, what appeals to them? Like, what, what do they need? How do we, you know, get into them? And I wrote about Final Fantasy 15 extensively back when the demos were coming out and people were really yes. angry that there was no playable female character. I actually really appreciated that the main characters were four lead men or four dudes who very clearly love each other and they're very good friends and they're not afraid to be like, yep, I love you, bro. And like they have each other's back and they wrestle and they, and they, and they, and they joke with each other and they like hug each other and whatnot. And I think that that kind of just positive nor like normalization, like normalizing that is so important. So in kingdom hearts, having Sora and Riku's uh, friendship at the forefront of this game and have it, be very clear that these two these two dudes would do absolutely anything for each other is so important. I think more games need to um, take up that trope or you know use that kind of that kind of story mechanism because then it will normalize and it will you know spread the word like this is like this is normal like society can't have this sort of toxic they they can't they can't keep putting bad labels on uh, and shaming men away from you know being like being open with how much they care about each right. other and you know secure in their masculinity and whatnot so hopefully this paves the way <laughs> I, I i hope so i think that kingdom hearts there's an argument um that the overall series is kind of a an analysis on the dangers of toxic masculinity as well because when you have those char characters that isolate themselves from those relationships and focus just on their strength it leads to their undoing like what happens with tara and when Riku fell to the darkness because he yep. was isolated and not taking care of himself. But that kind of brings me to the next um, subject that I really highly agree with you on that's equally important. And it's probably one of, if not the biggest flaw in the Kingdom Hearts series, and that is female representation. Yes. Until Aqua, I feel like we didn't really get a female. We didn't get a strong female character until Aqua, which was already, oh, that's what, six games? Six, seven yeah. games? Six games? Yeah, yeah, it's almost 10 years through the because it was 2010 mm -hmm. 10 year anniversary is 2012 so yeah it was almost 10 years without that center point yeah i i just feel and i you know expound on this in the book but i just feel that i know a lot of people have a lot of affection for Kyrie, and that's okay mm -hmm. but i think she totally sucks and i think <laughs> she's I, I i do i think she's a really poor a really poor uh poor addition to the series and in the first game she was you know a princess of heart and she was right. part of something important and she was also a catalyst for Sora and Riku to fight each other basically she oh absolutely she was the thing, yeah she was the thing for them to fight over which which for that game for that specific game made sense and worked for the plot right and then after I just don't think she has I do not like they sort of dumped the princesses of heart thing. They haven't really been as been as dedicated to it as they were in the first game. So I feel like she has absolutely no, no relevance and no business being in any of the games after kingdom hearts one. Like she's totally useless. She doesn't do anything. I don't care that she can fight with a keyblade. Like I don't, 
I don't understand why she even has one now. Like the key, the keyblade is supposed to be like a special thing. So you're giving right. this, you're giving this like goobery little girl a keyblade and being like, okay, you're going to fight now. Like I don't. And of course she's going to magically be super proficient because that's how this universe works. But she, uh, I just think that she has absolutely no relevance and it sucks. And Namine, her, her, her nobody who was, uh, inarguably the most powerful nobody because she has the actual ability to alter memories and erase them. She is True. the most powerful nobody. She, like Kyrie, is shunted around from person to person in Kingdom Hearts 2 and is the woman as guide or woman as healer. She's always doing something for for a man to get a man where he needs to go. Sort of like the way all the women in the Odyssey exist as a function to get Odysseus where he needs to go. I wrote a paper and about that. Comparing the hearts to the Odyssey. No way. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I want to read it. Yeah. I, oh God. I, I wrote it in 2010, so I don't even know if I still have it. And <laughs> I was also I was also a child when I wrote it, so it's not <laughs> it's not That's super amazing. polished, but it exists. That's awesome. Um, no, I feel like well with with the island imagery in particular, um, and the concept of homecoming, and also epic conventions of heroes going to hell and coming back again and getting stuck on islands. I, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff there that I played with. Um, maybe a little too much, but I think, yeah, I think that's <laughs> such a valid comparison that I've already, yeah, I, 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 I yeah. Um, here's, here's my thing. Okay. And I, I don't mean to come off as argumentative because I totally appreciate your view. Um, but I, I have a really soft spot for Kyrie, even though okay. I understand that she's been super underutilized. <laughs> and we can totally talk about it. I, I'm not here to change your opinion or your mind or whatever. Um, because I, I agree that Kyrie exists as the function to separate Sora and Riku. In mm -hmm. fact, you know, it's it's in their elemental chemistry, it's in their names. Like Sora is the sky, Riku's the land, Kyrie is the sea that comes between them. Mm -hmm. But I I don't know. I think that they've definitely handled her completely incorrectly um and i don't have any strong feelings of love towards the character but i also kind of feel like there's too much potential and there's not enough about her to say that i would i i hate her okay. as well you know what i mean uh-huh i okay. i also think that there are lots there are a lot of like little things that are leading up to her being used as a better character in three now don't get me wrong i definitely believe that the kingdom Hearts series so far has been about the relationship between sora and riku Okay. You know, drive apart in Kingdom Hearts 1, we see them get back together in Kingdom Hearts 2, and then in 3D we see them go back to back and try to like claim their mastery status and have Riku redeem himself and Sora fall short and kind of have an inverted path from where they started. Interesting. Um, but as far as Kairi is concerned, she's definitely, I don't like that she's the symbol of home because that, that kind of has like a maternal thing, like women are either trophies or moms. Right. Right. I hate that. Um, Do any but, in Kingdom Hearts even have a mom? Like, where are all the moms? Sora, Sora. Where are the dads? Where are the dads? Uh, what I think is really funny in Birth by Sleep when when Riku mentions that Sora's dad is coming to get them, like they pan out into the ocean, but there's just an empty boat. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just like it's a metaphor. I find that's an that's an interesting thing. That was actually almost a chapter in my book, and I kind of scrapped it because I sort of walked myself in circles, but no one in Kingdom Hearts has any parents. We know that Kyrie was adopted by the mayor of Destiny Islands when she got there. But, where? but like what how, like how is she not how is she not worried about her grandma? How is she not thinking about what happened there? Right. She must be dead by now. Like, oh, oh oh absolutely. Like she's been waiting <laughs> waiting fifty you know 12, 15 years to get into Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> no way that's happening now. Um, but I think that Kyrie, I don't know. I, I definitely agree that her role as a princess has been underutilized and that it was definitely ham-fisted giving her a keyblade. I think oh, that the way that they tried to explain it in Birth by Sleep was kind of forced to with her accidentally touching Aqua's keyblade and inheriting it. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm not ready to write her off yet. I think that, I, I don't think that the that the solution to her poor development would be to shaft her at this point. Um, and I, I feel like with the way that they showed her in the secret ending for 3D and the way that she is being sent off to train in an anti-time chamber with Lee and Merlin and the good fairies, um, I feel like that they're, they're prepping her. Like, she's coming back. 
but to what end i don't know i don't know if i would say that i trust them enough to handle her character but i really like aqua and even for all of her faults i really love Namine. so okay i have hope i guess is what i'm saying i'm not ready to write okay. off i i am <laughs> see i'm done i'm done i'm just totally done <laughs> what would it take for you to be like okay you can you can come to the party Kyrie? uh no i know nothing i don't want her nothing at my party point. uh i just think i just think at this point whatever they do with her for kingdom hearts 3 it's too little too late and it'll be it'll be like a contrivance at this point right? yeah it's like oh we had to do something because fans wanted us to do something with her like i think it's too little too late well i mean it's not that i disagree because i i definitely think that if they were going to prep her for something in three she should have at least had some scenes doing something in other games. But. Right. And I know there's, you know, rumors, unfounded rumors flying around the internet that Riku and Kyrie are playable. And if Riku is playable, it makes absolute sense because he's been playable right. before. Kyrie being playable does not make sense in any way because she has not, I feel like she has not earned it. I feel, I don't think that she's going to have a playable campaign. I, I can't see them doing that. I can't see them doing something like Birth by Sleep or 3D. Right. For this game where you have full playable chapters with different characters. Mm -hmm. But what I suspect is going to happen, uh, I feel like in the final battle, when push comes to shove, it'll be similar to what happened with um, with Riku in the Xemnas battle in Kingdom Hearts 2, where for brief periods of time we'll get to play as each of the, of the Guardians of Light in the final battle for extended I hope, periods I hope of so. time. I would love to play as Axel. Assuming Axel I would too. one, maybe. Right, because that's that's the next thing. We don't know who the final lineup is going to be. Like, we everyone's got their guesses, and there's some really educated guesses, and Gien Sid certainly seems to know who he thinks it will be. But even Nomura has been like, you know, it's not going to be what you think. Oh, come on, man. So, I know, but that's got me like, oh, no, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Like, personally, I don't think Sora's going to end up being a guardian of light. Yeah, I mean, he so, screwed up real bad in 3D. Right, that doesn't mean that I don't think he'll be there. I definitely think that he'll be there, but I don't think that he's going to be one of the Chosen Seven. No. Like, yeah, because he has he wasn't chosen for the Keyblade in the first place, and then he fell short of the mark. Right. So, not I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve it or whatever. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me if Sora is not one of the seven of the lights at the end of the at the end of the game. I feel like. Uh... So, mm, have you seen... It could go in so many different ways, yeah. It, it, it could. I, I am not sure. I mean, that, that's a, that's, I've never heard anyone bring that theory up before, but that makes sense to me. I have, uh, I have a theory. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 can only end with one of two people uh, dying in a really horrible way. Ooh. And that is either Sora or Riku. And I don't think it's going to be Sora. Ooh. I don't think it's going to be no. Sora. Um, no. Riku, story until the end. Right. Well, one of two things can happen. Riku will, Riku will die or something. Uh, or, or in Kingdom Hearts, you don't die. You just become a, you become a bunch of weird beings <laughs> you separated. Become someone else. You become, you become <laughs> someone else. So he's either going to, you know, like go away forever, uh, sacrificing himself so Sora can complete his goal, or, 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 or uh, are you familiar with the anime Madoka Magica? No. So, oh my God, it's I don't. Great. It, it, it's it's great. I don't want to spoil the. I don't want to spoil the ending. Uh, I'm so not let's just, watch let, it. So I'm let's so just say. <laughs> let's just say in the ending, the main character, one of the main characters that you followed throughout this entire series, uh, basically sacrifices herself uh, to okay. become a godlike being that fixes all of the problems, and as a result, everybody she has ever met forgets that she ever existed. That's the trade. Oh, so, so she it's is like Shion, but better. Yes, she is wiped from everyone's memory. Given Kingdom Hearts' <laughs> affinity for playing with people's memory, um, she everyone's memory is completely wiped, and she ceases to exist. But she becomes this godlike oh. being that saves everyone. So she does the ultimate sacrifice and saves everyone. But then everyone forgets that she ever was alive. And I feel okay. like, and I feel like that's a thing that would happen with Sora. Like Sora's like, I'm gonna do this thing and everyone forgets he ever existed and you know the final the final credits are all of these Ooh. worlds going back to normal and everyone's happy and Kyrie and Riku are like standing on a beach somewhere being like wait a minute <laughs> something is missing well here's here's the thing i that made me think of something that i could see them doing that is horrifying but also could could set up for the next saga um so picture this right similar to what you said but it's when Xehanort 
gets defeated. He gets wiped from everyone's memories, his impact is gone, and as a result, the chain of events that happened that led all of these characters to meeting each other oh, yeah. and their paths and whatever wiped clean. Yep, and then so these characters still yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so they start from the baseline. Well, of- that's very that's very poetic. But I feel like maybe so he so he 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 did the whole the whole time travel thing. He gets wiped from existence. Would it be everything would it would he then have never been born or is it like we defeated him and he ends up living and not being a total pain in the ass like like would his fetus mm-hmm. still be equal? I feel like it's his existence. His I existence. feel like he okay. should never exist. Cuz that's the thing like that's Ooh. the worst fate anybody could befall is to never have existed in the first place. And given Kingdom Hearts affinity for telling people you don't really exist, I feel like this would be a very Kingdom Hearts thing to do. Yeah. Oh. I don't I mean I don't know I don't know if they would actually do that, but I feel like Kingdom Hearts huh. needs needs a really terrible like Kingdom Hearts needs at least one kick in the balls because right. it's it been needs so consequences. Yeah, it needs one really big consequence and it needs something. I think it needs something like horrifically terrible. I feel like that's where it's going. Yeah. We'll I feel see. like they're setting up um Psyx for that. Mm, of, probably. Um, because well, just because he's he's kind of the prime candidate for it, right? Like like he's Axel's best friend. But he's also like he was Zemnis's confidant. But he, we don't really know what's going on in his head, and it seems like Lee has some hope for his friend. But you know, uh, I, I think it would be very fitting to see him bite the big one as a result of like at the last minute turning on the Xehanorts or something. I can totally see that happening, and then he's just just gone forever. But that's the thing about Kingdom Hearts. It's such a it's such an everything and the kitchen sink sort of. Yeah, situation that we could be here talking all day like what if this happened or what if this and it could body snatching and time travel absolutely like heck anything anything yeah anything oh, man. now i'm thinking of it now i'm like really thinking about thinking about like xehanort getting wiped from existence damn because didn't Nomura say that the kingdom hearts series will continue and it will be with sora but this is the end right. of the xehanort saga so maybe it's yeah. a reboot He's gone, and then everything See, starts over. And that's that seems to me to be like the cleanest way to end canon reboot. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know. Okay. I mean, I don't know if he would do it. I feel like a lot of people would be very mad. Um, but people get mad regardless. So what do I care? <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking for almost an hour, and we've got a lot of things that people want us to talk about before the interview ends. And I know that it's going to be a busy day for both of us and a busy weekend. Let's get into those questions. So Kaxinold from the forums, <laughs> one of those impossible to pronounce usernames, says, For more serious questions and speculation, I'd love to hear your opinion on the history of Kingdom Hearts, the concepts and stuff such as Secret Ending and how the game came together. So I actually really love, really love that every game has a secret ending and it has like a little teaser movie for the next thing. I really, I really like that because it feels like I remember getting very close to the end of Kingdom Hearts 2 and having a friend of mine beat it first. And she saw the secret ending in the Keyblade, in the Keyblade graveyard. I remember being so upset and being like, oh my God, I have to see this. I have to see this. I'm not going to try and watch it online. I'm going to beat this game. It's going to be my reward. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. And just being incredibly excited. And I remember when I finished we finished Kingdom Hearts 1 and another side, another story played. And we were like, what the heck is this? And It's it, iconic it, the way that that like makes you feel. Yeah, it's so, like, it was mystical. And I felt like I had like earned, like I had earned a secret. I was very, very excited for it. Um, here's another th- a question from one of our site staff, Sign. Um, she'll also be AD23 this weekend. She says, maybe discuss some of the more obscure things that most people wouldn't know about like cut content from the games, history stuff, whatever. I don't know how much you, I mean, I know that you're a super fan and I don't mean to be like a gatekeeper of like, well, how much do you really know? Um, but what, what do you know about like cut content and stuff from the games? I'm really hoping, so this kind of ties into what I'm hoping I see at D23. Um, yeah. Remember That's they found, too, that we remember they, about. yeah, they found the wireframes for Buzz and Woody from the original they Kingdom Hearts did. 1. And I wanted to talk to you about that because in an interview, you got some wrong information about how, those things were found. Yeah, they were, uh, oh my God. Yeah, it was a, there was a video. I remember there was a video floating around online and that got pulled incredibly quickly. Yeah, I heard things about that too. And then there's the wireframes in the game. Right. Um, Well, yeah, in Kingdom Hearts 2, um, I don't remember in which version of the game, but there, yeah, the wireframes are the untextured 
frame, like the untextured models are there. But also, um, relatively recently, we've been able to unearth the original pitch document oh, that's from so Square cool. Enix to Disney. And in it, there's concept art of like a big Al's toy barn world from the first Kingdom Hearts game Wow. that got cut. Yeah. So they've been wanting to have Pixar in there forever. I feel like Toy Story would have been included in Kingdom Hearts too if that hadn't if it hadn't come out the year that Pixar and Disney had their initial split. Mm -hmm. um, and then since then, I feel like Nomura has just been like, I want to save it for three. It it has to be. It it has to be for Kingdom Hearts three. It's such. It's so popular. There's a fourth movie coming out. I know Nomura really likes it. I know a lot of the development staff really like it. And it's very beloved. It. <laughs> it's very beloved in Japan. Have you been to Tokyo Disney? In Tokyo Disney Sea, which is right next to Tokyo Disneyland. Mm -hmm. um, I would argue that Tokyo Disney Sea is the better park. But Tokyo Disney Sea has a Toy Story experience. And they have the like si those singing animatronic Mr. Potato Head. And they have a bunch of uh, right. toys, Toy Story stuff. And Toy Story is just so popular. They have this whole store. Um, they sell like they sell they Toy sell uh, yeah they sell velcro <laughs> like the alien heads they sell velcro ones and people are like wearing them around the park <sighs> it's so beloved and i and it's beloved worldwide and i feel like they would be crazy not to include it in kingdom Hearts sorry i feel like they're going to because there, there's also so much potential they could follow the movies which i'm kind of getting tired of copy and paste movie plots but you, you know you could also have like literally a toy box world building things and I don't know, like a mini game world, but with these toys. Like, how fun would that be? So it's it's interesting that you say I'm tired of them. Um, I'm tired of them following the movie plot. Um, I think we already have very good evidence that they are not yeah. that they are not following the movie plot. And I think the best example of that is what they said they're doing with the Big Hero Six world, where right. they're basically continuing the story. And if you haven't seen Big Hero Six, I'm sorry. The Heartless take over the abandoned. <laughs> what are you doing? Go watch yeah. it. Sorry. The abandoned uh, the abandoned Baymax shell that was left, uh, you know, in like in like inner space. Uh, the heartless possess right. it and come back, and you fight it. And honestly, that sounds that's heartbreaking and terrifying and great, but also not something that happens in the movie. So I'm hoping yeah. that all of the other worlds do the same thing, where they have their own story within that world. I'm hoping too, and I think that there's a lot of potential there. Um, going back to the Big Hero Six thing, not only for it being the continuation, but when you really think about the events that have happened in Kingdom Hearts, you have an empty shell that's being taken over by darkness, but you also have a character who, is, who was abandoned in another dimension for rocketing out a, 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 their friend from that. Like Aqua. Basically what happened to Aqua. Yeah, that's basically I think Terra. That there's, yeah, so there's so much there that they could pull from. Also... Um, in the Tangled world, which I don't know how big of a deal this is going to end up being, but I think it's very interesting. Um, we see nobodies in one of the trailers. Mm -hmm. And this nobody, the nobodies that we see, of course, they're new, but they look like Marluxia. So obviously, those are the yeah. control over when he was in the organization. So my thought is, you know, there are a lot of parallels between Marluxia and Mother Gothel and Naminé and Rapunzel when you really think about it. Ooh. You've got... Yeah, you've got someone who's been held captive against her will, not really knowing what life on the outside is like, but who's also being used for her powers. I, I'm hoping that we're going to see a lot of parallels, more intentionally so, in all of these different worlds. I also think the black box thing in Hercules' world is brilliant because it, it, it ties into like the, the Romanized bastardization of the myth of Pandora a lot. Because yeah. you've got the master's black box, but you've also got the idea of Pandora's box. And Maleficent's like, oh, maybe it's in this Greek world. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. So I think that there's a lot of potential there. I really, I'm really hoping that this trend, we'll know this weekend. We'll know more about it this weekend and see exactly what they're doing with these worlds. And I'm, I'm pumped. I'm jazzed about it. Me too. How far along do you, how far along do you suspect that Kingdom Hearts 3 actually is in development? Uh, I think it's based on what we've seen of combat and based on what, what how we've seen the footage change, like that rock Titan battle we saw in the trailer a couple years ago right. and then the new one, like that game has come along so far. I have a feeling it's much farther along than anyone suspects anyone suspects. And I, I think we're going to get it next year. I think it's like a year and a, a year and a half or less away, 18 months yeah. or less. I agree. I think that I, I kind of want to punch people in the face that say, Oh, they just, just keep showing the same thing and i'm like yes we, we've seen a lot of olympus and we've seen a lot of this rock titan battle <laughs> but there's a reason it's 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 to show how far along it's come battle in theory like it's not 
the the how far it's come is so far from where it was. I also feel like maybe they've been showing the Hercules world so often because maybe that's the first world you go to. And if yeah. you, and if you notice as they're showing off Final Fantasy VII remake, all that footage is in Midgar. And if you go back and you right. look at previous Final Fantasy games that were shown off really early in development, like Final Fantasy XV with the Dusk Sky region, uh, Square has a tendency to not want to spoil things, so they tend to keep all of their early previews and early demos and early trailers to right. one area. So I think that this is them just not wanting to spoil people. I agree. Um, I, I I feel 100% that the Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to have a cult open in Olympus Coliseum. Um, just just because based off of what Nomar has said, the way Kingdom Hearts 3D opened, and the way Kingdom Hearts 0.2 ended, um, that we're just going to hop right off with Sora in Olympus Coliseum when the game opens. But as, as far as what we're also seeing in the worlds, I think it's interesting because clearly they have been having a lot of trouble rendering characters in the Unreal Engine. Yes. Um, the models we've seen it just with um, the unchained unchained key um, metals that have the new character models on them. They go in and change them two or three times until the characters look like their normal selves. Yeah. Um, so it actually wouldn't surprise me at all if it's it's if it has been a mix of that, but also wanting to get the look of the Disney characters in this new engine just right. Because if they fail at that, they could the characters could end up looking like they're in off model or like in Uncanny Valley. It's hard to render something that's traditionally two D drawn into like a three D world. Right. It's impossible. The those proportions don't make any sense. Like, look at Mickey. He <laughs> Yeah, man. You can't do that. You can't you can't break him into a three D world. You can try. But his ears that stay perfectly round at every angle and the way his nose sits on like it's not possible. No. So you gotta do the best that you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh mickey i oh mickey you're so fine um but i thought that hades especially looked so good in that orchestra trailer oh yeah i'm very impressed you I, were at the first I, date right i was i was in la i uh the week the weekend before e3 and i went to the concert and I was uh, I was there when they trotted Umar out and were like, "Hey, I'm here. We're gonna show you some stuff." And I've never been I've never been I've never been in a room where everyone just exploded like that. Like yeah. he came on stage and immediately, like the murmur through the crowd was, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" They're like, "He's right. here for a very specific. He's here because there's some. He brought something." So when right. he was like, "We're gonna show you a thing." So the woman, um, um, uh, Ari, who was doing the translation for him, he spoke and I am very impressed with how many people sitting in that audience actually knew Japanese because he said like, I'm here and we brought something to show you. And there was this ripple of like, like, a, <sighs> like, like, a, like a half scream and everybody else was like, what, what, what did he say? What did, like before the translator could say anything. And it was just amazing. And then when the orchestra, so the orchestra, played the trailer music live over the trailer right and it, in the seconds in the moments leading up to that trailer starting i've never been in a room so silent everyone went from <laughs> screaming to completely still it was it was so crazy and i of course also lost my mind if you saw the video that i recorded outside right after the concert i, I like did. I couldn't get, I couldn't get, Kingdom Hearts is the one thing that I can't get my shit together over. It's the one, it's the one thing. I think, I like to think as an adult, I have it together, not when it comes to Kingdom Hearts. So, no. um, so I'm expecting another equally sappy, terrible video on Saturday. I will be attending the, uh, d the, the panel with uh, Kim Wallace from Game Informer, who's also a okay. very, very big Kingdom Hearts fan. So she and I are going to sit and hold each other and cry. <laughs> okay. Well, afterwards, I'll try to find you and see if you're doing okay. See yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, I think it's really interesting, too. I think Kingdom Hearts is one of those series where everybody loves it for different reasons. Everyone came at it at different times. Everyone has their own favorite game. But everyone can kind of agree that, like, this thing is flawed. This this magical series is not the perfect video game. It's If we were to rate it against other video games, there would certainly be ones that would score higher for different reasons in different fields. But that doesn't mean that we don't love it more than any other game. Like, yes. Yes. It's, it's kind of like what you were talking about with when you were choosing 
what book to write in the first place like final fantasy 6 is iconic it's it's one of the best of of the retro jrpgs yes you know it, it's something that you could write about and write about and write about but you love kingdom hearts like you love it i love it Talking to you about this is making me so excited. I'm like, I'm like jiggling in my seat. I know, I'm so excited. Well, that's, this is the next question, actually. Um, what new Disney worlds do you want to see in Kingdom Hearts 3 or Final Fantasy characters? So we can talk about that, and we can also talk about what we think we're going to see at this trailer this weekend. Oh, my God. Give me Frozen, please. Please. Like, I feel like that's such a shoe win that I almost kind of feel like Nomura will be like everyone expects it. No. Well, um, but Frozen, <laughs> Frozen would just work so well. All you gotta it do, would. you get, you get an ice-powered Keyblade. You run around with Anna, and then you just, you know, slap Hans riding a heartless. Boom! You have your boss. Like it works. Like I, you... I don't love the craziness <laughs> of flow motion too much, but I think it would be really, really fun in the flow motion. Use, like, the, yeah, to yeah. use the slower version of flow motion, like skating around in that yeah. world. Um, give me Frozen or give me death. I'm obsessed with Frozen. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it's Frozen. So good. Um, it's, it's, so a, it's a great movie. I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping we uh, we get some Frozen. Um, I feel like all of the all of the Disney releases since well, even Princess and the Frog, but I'm talking more specifically with the era that started with Tangled. I think all yes. of those have themes, characters, locations that fit really, really well within Kingdom Hearts. Yes, um, I feel like Toy Story is also a really, a really good, um, a really, a really good bet there. Um, Good contender. Absolutely. I feel like I feel like maybe we'll get another Pirates of the Caribbean world because now there's maybe. six movies. Right. Um, it's fine. Please keep the nightmare. If if I have to pick a recurring world to come back, get rid of everything else. I don't need to go to Wonderland. <laughs> I don't need to go back to Atlantis. They can go away. I give me Halloween Town again because Halloween Here's Town is just so fun. Uh, we've gotten some reports that there aren't going to be a lot of returning worlds, which makes sense. Okay. That does make um, sense. Which is which is makes sense and it's fine. But I feel like that there are definitely some staples that Sora has had from with every adventure that if this is like the end of this saga, I think it would be great to stop by and like end those stories yeah. in, in a good way. Like with I think Agravaugh, I know a lot of people are tired of it. But I feel like it 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 needs like that linchpin at the end. I Where think that there that? needs to be closure. Do freaking do the Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Like get John Reese Davies in here and yeah. do it. Like I think I think that's that's totally doable. Um Yeah, I think people are like, well, they're not gonna do it because it's a direct to video sequel. But I'm like, um whatever. they did Mickey and the Three Musketeers, which is a direct to video DVD release. They did. Uh speaking they super of did. Speaking of Disney Disney properties, I know that we mm -hmm. got we got Steamboat Willy World to show King Mickey yes. back when he was King Mickey. Where like why wouldn't they do like a goofy movie world or like DuckTales oh. or like Darkwing Duck? Like they just re they just rebooted DuckTales. I feel like right. I feel like if they want if they're trying to stay current with the game, I feel like a DuckTales world would be like amazing. Also think well, of the, the stuff you could do. It's like Indiana Jones but with Donald Duck. Right. Well, they could also do Indiana Jones now. <laughs> you know what? They could. But here's the thing. So here's the thing about about the Lucasfilm properties and the Marvel properties. Right. We're not going to get we're not going to get either licensing nightmares licensing Absolutely. licensing nightmares and also con um continuity nightmares look right. at look at well lucasfilm has everything so under wraps for star wars and that's so right. they're so insular with it but you look at marvel and marvel has the cinematic universe and then the, and then the television cartoons and then the television shows and the netflix shows and yeah, it's too much it's too, too much, much to keep track of there's no continuity though there's too much going yeah. on so but i don't see any harm in summons or weapons based off of like the marvel characters or star wars or whatever yeah. um so i don't know i feel like they could possibly do that i also kind of feel like if they were to pick one of those to actually have a world, because I know that it, I, I know that they've at least talked about it. Um, I feel like they could start with like the first Star Wars or the first Indiana Jones film. No, I first having to dive too much in. No, my first Star Wars film. I, I mean, mean the fourth. Episode I mean, four. Okay, good. I mean, oh my god, Jesus! <laughs> come on now. Oh my god. Okay. I wouldn't do that to anybody. Um, I wouldn't even propose that. Don't even dream it. So. Those, are, those are my world picks. Uh, as far as Final Fantasy characters, I mean, you got to have Noctis in there. One. I, I, I'm, I love Noctis so much. And Ray was like, he, Ray basically said that he would love to see Noctis as a carefree kid without the baggage of his game oh. and like living a life he deserves. And I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. I want it. Um, but the thing about Noctis though is that what happened with Nomura on that game, 
I don't know if Maybe they not. would. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think it would be a great way to kind of end, like, bury the hatchet, I guess. Yeah. But I don't know. Uh, I think lightning is a good pick. Yeah, lightning Lightning is still very, very popular uh, yeah. in, in Japan and just in general. So I feel like she's a pretty good bet. I think she's a good bet. I would have primed her because of her role in the sequel um, of her own series. I, I would have thought that she would be a great contender for Olympus. But I don't think Olympus is going to have that Final Fantasy subplot in this Oh, one. yeah, the Zack thing. Yeah, I don't think it's going to. Because, you know, with Orin and Zack and Cloud, like, there's always been, like, this dark Final Fantasy character that's kind of flirted with death, and then you've got Lightning, a character who has quote-unquote died, but not really, but she's worked with goddesses and gods, and her name is Lightning, and the, the symbol of Olympus is Lightning, and, you know, okay. blah, 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 blah. We um, will see. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like I said, I think she would have been great for it, but to see her elsewhere would also be fine. Um, I want more classic characters, too. I would love to see, I know it's not going to happen probably because of the name, but I love Terra. Yeah, that's too confusing. <laughs> I know. But, but Riku's in it. Riku is it. Riku is in it. Um, and they never say her name, so... Let's see. <laughs> classic, classic, classic characters. Uh, I mean, they can stick the Warrior of Light in there. He's in everything yeah. now. Um, I don't really know. If they but if they put one more dang Final Fantasy VII character in that game, I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna backflip out a window. We don't need any more. Oh, but what about Vincent and no, I don't care. Taichi and uh, This is look, this is this is coming from the girl <laughs> who who I'm actually staring at the two cloud amiibos right now. I have them. So like I am a giant big Final Fantasy nerd and I love Final Fantasy VII and I just just stay on the Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I feel like the remake with the remake coming, they're gonna they're gonna shoehorn in probably, oh, probably. Barrett. Probably Barrett. Well, I don't even know. Could you imagine? Oh God. Okay. Yeah, Never right. mind. I know. I it's it's <laughs> um but um back to what you were saying about um a goofy movie and DuckTales, real oh quick. Oh my god, please. I feel like I feel like the twist on that would be if they were to include stuff from those properties, the conceit would kind of have to be, but they're also from Disney Castle. Like there's this whole they yeah. have to like tie it in with the mythology of where those Disney characters come from. And as much as I love a goofy movie and goof troop and that whole world, I can't imagine Goofy having a son and not talking about him. He's you know yeah, but it's Goofy. He's been too busy That's saving true. the universe to talk about it. And him. he's Goofy. Oh, I, I oh, hey, so I'm back. About it. Yeah, no. But think of like a like. Don't you want like a power line Keyblade? Like, come on. Of course man. I do. <laughs> where, I grew where, up in the 90s. And then it makes all the heartless dance, and that's its special attack. Um, so what do you think the world reveal will be? Oh. I know. There are so many. I've got some educated guesses, but I'm not confident enough about any of them to say for sure. Toy Story is a safe is, is my safe bet. I think right. it might be Toy Story. Okay, you know what? I'm going to put all my money on Toy Story. Do you want... Okay, okay. I... My heart is telling me that it's Wreck-It Ralph. Ooh. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Do you remember those screenshots that we got? Sora was, it was the first time we saw dry forms and there was those screenshots of Sora and Olympus. And there was one of him uh, with, with the orange mode with the shield. And there was one of him with the red power mode, but they censored out what his keyblade had turned into. Oh yeah. The, sh the shape of it is a hammer. Oh, so shit. I, and they said they censored it because of the world <gasps> that it came from. So oh I'm God. assuming that it's Fix-It Felix Jr.'s hammer. And then we see at the end of the latest trailer, Sora is holding up another Keyblade transformation that's mostly censored, but we see some sort of weird gun, grenade, barrel thing at the end of it. That could be anything. But I don't think it's too dissimilar from the aesthetic that we see um, in the, I think it's called Hero's Quest or whatever that, that shoot 'em up first-person shooter is at in Wreck-It Ralph's arcade. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's too dissimilar from that. So I, I think if, if the Keyblade transformation is anything to go off of, that's what my heart is telling me, that it's Wreck-It Ralph. <gasps> Shit. I never even thought of that. Dang. Okay. <laughs> but there's lots of evidence that it could be Atlantis or that it could be Treasure Planet. Oh, my God. Okay, listen. Yeah, you know what? I've heard the Treasure Planet stuff. I've heard Treasure right. Planet a lot. Um Atlantis? I no, not 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 Little Mermaid. Atlantic. Oh, it's, oh, Atlantis. Atlantis. Oh, Michael shit. J. Fox. Okay. Atlantis. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, because I heard Atlanta, and I just have like awful PTSD from going into Atlantica, and there being nothing. It's okay. Going it's okay. On. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, okay. You're oh, here. Man. You're here. You're safe. You know Wreck it, Wreck it, Ralph would make so much total sense because, I mean, it is a video game. Like, think right. of the things you can do with that. It's at the video game panel. It's yeah. at D twenty three where they're going to be showing off Wreck It Ralph two. I I mean, you know, it, I could be totally wrong, but. Th- Based on what, what I've seen, that's what my heart is telling me. And you have to let your heart be your guiding key, Alexa. You yeah, have but to. My, yeah, but my heart says frozen. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, my heart, heart says. says. Pick the practical choice that's safe. Let it go. You know, for real. I just love frozen, and I just want to see her running around. Frozen. I want to I see. Like Ru- that's gonna happen. I want to see Riku running around with Elsa. I feel like they'd get along really well. I think so too. I think that's another thing. There's a lot of potential there for like theme overlap with the characters. Yeah. Exactly. Oh man, now I can't wait. <laughs> I know. Whatever it's going to be, like I'm not going to be disappointed. Even if we see returning worlds that I didn't like so much in previous titles, just seeing them in the new engine and seeing them open up and be like Olympus doesn't look anything like it ever has before. So, no matter what happens, I'm probably going to be very happy with the game. I just don't want Atlantica like forget it. I feel like it's a safe bet that it's not coming no. back. Yeah, good, good. Like Stay away. A- it was a Little Mermaid. It was my favorite movie when I was a kid, and my parents like, my parents thought I was like Ariel because I was, you know, the little kid that was like, I'm gonna go out and see the world, and there's right. all this crap out there. And I also collected a lot of weird shit. Um, Me too. So I actually have a very great affinity for that movie. However, I just don't. I just think, like in Kingdom Hearts 2, there weren't even any heartless there. You were just putting on a concert. Like I'm done with you, man. You don't okay, need what me. If that, what if that's what happens with Frozen? Then I'm also done. Like, <laughs> that's not fair. Let it go. That's not fair. Um, uh, one more question uh, from Alpha Bay Max. I Aww. think I know what I think I know. I know. I think I know what the the answer is going to be. But would you publish other boss fight books? Would you do it for the Kingdom Hearts series? If so, would it be for like Birth by Sleep or the first game or whatever? Oh my god! So I know I can't, I can't, uh, I can't double dip with boss fight. That's not how boss fight works. However, um, I know Kingdom Hearts three is coming out, and that ends that ends the Ansem Seeker of Darkness saga. Mm-hmm. And I would really, or the Dark Seeker saga. Oh, whatever I, it's called. Whatever they're calling it now. Uh, oh, P.S. P.S. Before I get to that answer, writing a book in which there are like six different ansoms and then you have to ex- you have to explain like someone's possessed body getting a different name but is actually someone else's spirit in another body i trying to explain that i had one editor i had one editor who was a kingdom hearts fan and one editor who was who had never played the games and um to help me you know edit for clarity and both of them were like wait a minute which ansem do you mean here so when i got so when i got my my like second draft of edits back they were like do we really we i think we need to seriously consider doing a glossary because there's 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 ansem and then there's riku ansem and then there's heart the heartless ansem and then there's ansem oh. the scientist and then you have Zemnis who is the ansem nobody and then you have xehanort and then you have right. terra nort and then you have have Terra, Terra Nort, Zemnis. I'm like, I, oh god, yeah. like it was so bad. It was the worst. It was, it was the worst. And I definitely rank this day as one of the worst days of my life. I was sitting <laughs> on my couch, trying, <laughs> trying to make this make sense. And I was thinking of a way to make it make sense to make it to just like I, I had to go through and edit it out. And I accidentally did like a like replace all Ansem with whatever. And I was like, no, 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 wait. So I had to go back and literally read. Like my entire, like I had to reread the entire book again. I had just done it and I had to go through and read it all again because Google Drive freaking saved the change before I could revert. And I was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to read the whole thing. I know I can go like into the restore previous drafts, but then if I restore a previous draft, that one didn't have all the Terranort changes in it. So I had to sit there and I spent my whole day just parsing out Ansem's. Uh, And And I was like, why is this happening to me? Why did I do this? So your answer would I write other books on Kingdom Hearts? It's my hope. I'm trying to get, um, it is my hope after this game comes out and you know, we play it and we do whatever with it. I would really like to. And I know, I'm like, I'm friends with a lot of the, you know, I know a lot of people at Square and I know you, every time I talk about you, you listen to me. So please listen to me. I would love to write a book on like the series development history and just like all of those little stories. Um, that made you know the first game possible, like that made the games change. Like once the product is out and in people's hands, I really want 
to delve in and tell that story because people love this series so much. And that's a story that, that, that I'm interested in. And I just have so many questions and I know that, you know, Japanese developers tend to be really, really secretive, but I just feel like there's so much like so much unconditional love for this series among its fans. I feel like that's something that would do really well. And that's something that people would want. So I, you know, have started putting, putting some like preliminary documents together and I'm like thinking about it, but I would really, really, really like to write just the whole development history of this series and like stuff that was scrapped and, yeah you know, what happened and whatnot. So I would absolutely love to. This series is so dear to my heart. And I just, I've basically, I basically grew up with it and it had a huge influence on where I ended up today, which is in video games, which is super weird. So, <laughs> so yeah, I would love to. Um, I think that, especially since stuff like the, the Ultimania books don't come out in America. I know, I know. And, and huge, um, huge shout out and thanks to Sam, by the way, who does most of our translating. Yeah, Sam. Sam, uh, you guys have that really amazing bibliography. <laughs> you guys have this you really, go. really, really amazing like resource for translated interviews, and you guys helped me a lot when I was putting this together because finding the original in Japanese is somewhat hard because Famitsu doesn't publish all of its interviews online. No, they don't. No. So, <laughs> um, so yes, huge thanks to Sam. She's she's so cool. She's so great. She really takes the time. We have other people as well, but I would say that ninety percent of what gets translated and what has been in the archives has been because of Gold Panner Sam. So yeah, thanks um, everybody. If you want to show Sam how much you love her, I will leave a link below where you can donate to just get her a cup of coffee because some nights she needs it. <laughs> oh my god, I would love to buy her like ten coffees. Yeah, I will. I will send you a link. She's the best. I'm gonna buy her a coffee. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, but I think that there should definitely be um, an English Kingdom Hearts postmortem. I th that needs to happen. Plenty of people would buy it. Mm -hmm. And there's been a demand for it, honestly. Yes. Yes, there has um, been. So, yeah, I wish you the best of luck in that. I, I definitely think it should happen, and I hope it does. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about before we, we wrap this mother up? Um, no, we did a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll um, just talk all day, and I gotta get, uh, I gotta go to Anaheim. <laughs> me too. Uh, <laughs> we gotta get to the conference. So uh, before we part, I just wanted to say that Boss Fight. Whenever they do new seasons, they do tend to have open submissions, and even though right now they're not accepting pitches on Kingdom Hearts, pretty much everything else is is fair game. They've they've late they've um lowered the limit of how old the aim the game in question can be that you're pitching. I think it just has to be like at least a year old now. Okay. Oh, wow. Which, okay. which is much better off than where Alexa was. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can go to bossfightbooks.com and check out submission stuff. We'll let you guys know when submissions are open. And of course, check out the other books in the series and definitely check out Alexa's book. You can get it right now on Boss Fight Books and through Amazon. Uh, you can get it in physical copy, but you can also get it in ebook. Uh, and Alexa is going to be doing a signing if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area. Am I correct? Yes, on August 10th, uh, I'll be at Green Apple Books along with um, Chris Kohler, who's writing a book for the second season. And I'll be doing a signing and a reading. And also, if you are at D23 this weekend and you have a copy, please come find me. I'll be running around the show. And I will very happily sign your copy. Alexa, thank you so much for joining us. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, this was awesome. Anytime you guys want to have me, this was, I like, uh, I don't have any, any outlets to geek out with people about Kingdom Hearts, so. Listen, we're always here. We're when always in need of a more critical analysis. Whenever. <laughs> so, uh, thanks everybody. Uh, I'm sorry that this interview was so much later than the past two were. We have other guests who are really busy right now because of anime conventions and, and different obligations and appearances. But don't worry, more people are coming. In the meantime, uh, I am PJ, and this is Alexa, and uh, go pick up Boss Fight Books Kingdom Hearts 2. Bye! <laughs>